Welcome in everyone. Welcome to the January 2022 Astrology Report. Better late than never, right? <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going to cover a lot of stuff here. I do try to be thorough. And so for those with short attention spans, you want to get right at it. I'm going to have it, you know, timestamp so you can click ahead. For those of you who, you know, want something to listen to while you're working, being productive, you know, maybe save it later to your watch later playlist. And Listen, listen while you're doing something productive because we're going to, either way, we're going to be covering, you know, just the general overview of the energy, what you can expect in terms of, you know, love and relationships, career and money, the world at large. Um, some of you might want to not just listen. You might want to watch too because I'm going to have a lot of visuals in here hopefully to keep your attention. I think you'll find it interesting. Um, then we're going to have some important dates, and if you stay to the very end, I'm going to have a spiritual homework assignment, and my gosh, I've got so many ideas about that, so much to say at the very end, you know, and, and that's hopefully to help you make the most of the energy that is coming up for this month. Oh, and another thing, if you want to see more videos like this, or if you got something good out of it, then please, you know, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and, you know, let me know what you think in the comments down below. It helps us out. You know, I hate to say it, but we got to say it here on YouTube. And every little thing you do to interact with this channel really helps. So I absolutely appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So let's just go over the general overview, the energy of this month. I think the main themes that we're going to be seeing are uh, having to do with reassessing values and priorities. Also, recalibrating your strategy this year. There's a lot of energy that has us looking at our ideals versus reality because of a lot of the Capricorn and Aquarius energy coming up. Also a uh, push towards resolving issues rather than coping with them. And I think also a push towards simplicity over complexity and practicality over impracticality. Obviously, it's the first month of the new year, so, you know, we are looking at new beginnings, and it just so happens that in this month of January 2022, we're coming into a shifting of the nodes. Very important, because basically over the last year, we've been dealing with the, no the North Node in Gemini, putting the South Node in Sagittarius, and that has had a lot of energy, uh, very mental energy. Uh, has been the focus and now in this month of January we're shifting out of that mental energy into more having to do with money values you know yours versus theirs issues of self-sufficiency versus dependency and versus healthy interdependency by the way I talk more about this in my 2022 astrological forecast which is a two-part series if you miss it i should have it at the tail end of this video so you can click on through and watch that video if you want to see it but i definitely get into a lot more detail about the nodes shifting which is occurring this month right right out the gate we are definitely setting the tone for what's happening not just in the year ahead but the year and a half ahead because that's my cat because um that's how long the nodes will be um, North Node in Taurus, South Node in Scorpio. So what are the pain points of the energy for this month that we need to be on the lookout for? Well, um, what's not workable? And you know what? I'm already feeling it. I've, I'm already feeling it. I don't know because I'm filming this on the 4th of January. Are you feeling this already? <laughs> like this is not working. What works here? What's the answer? Some of you may be dealing with feelings of powerlessness, which I'm going to speak to that as we get further into this broadcast, and I apologize if this keeps moving, but my cat has decided it's a toy. Let's keep rolling with it. Um, and also, um, this feeling maybe that you are unable to create what you want. That could be another pain point that comes up this month. Uh, however, out of this, maybe you get some deep revelations about um, what what you really want. You know, maybe as I've I've come to these conclusions that... God, this is another year. I'm coming into another year where I'm not living in the area that I want to live. Oh, but wait a minute. Had I moved back there, I probably wouldn't be living as well. I probably would be suffering a lot financially right now. I would be dealing with a whole different set of issues. 
because I look at that town that I so longed for and wanted and what it's become. And I'm having to tell myself, you know, that's not what it used to be. And maybe it was for the best that you didn't get sent back like you wanted to, right? We're, we're kind of working through these, again, ideals versus reality. And um, some of us may be realizing that what we've wanted maybe wasn't for our best, or maybe it was for our best that we were held back and had to regroup, re-strategize, reprioritize. Yet and still, I'm not minimizing the fact that some of us are probably feeling this tone generally, collectively of, you know, something has got to give here, but I can't keep going on like this. And, um, right, we, when you start the year off with that feeling, it, it really sets the pace for what's coming ahead, which is a year of figuring out um, how to maybe, yes, resolve problems that we've been coping with um, maladjusting to for far too long. I don't know if you recently saw Teal Swan released her annual um, forecast, and so it's for 2022. Very good. Check it out if you get the chance. But in that video, she said that this is a year where bypassing and denial will become more difficult to avoid. And I think that some of you can, you're already feeling that. You can resonate with that, as am I, because I'm definitely having these feelings uh, that I mentioned, and it, it just sets the tone for the remainder of the year of us figuring out, okay, how do I resolve this? How do I get down to the bottom of this? Because nothing seems to work. What's going to work? So let's talk about what to expect in January in terms of love and relationships. Well, we are coming into this month with that Venus and Capricorn retrograde. <laughs> Wah, 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 you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was kind of a buzzkill. Um, this is really making it so that if there are issues that have been long avoided, ignored, unresolved, well, it just gets brought up for re-examination. And so, you know, be careful with others, particularly as Mercury goes retrograde in Aquarius, January 14th through the 25th. Um, there's a lot I can say about, you know, on the personal, interpersonal level. I think we're going to talk more about that in the homework assignment uh, that I will have at the very end. But suffice it to say, you know, for the time being, um, my advice is over this month that Venus in Capricorn remains in retrograde, we really need to um, look at how we can identify our core needs and values currently, right, because they change. Um, how do we align those core needs and values with external relationships? And I know for some people, this is going to be tough advice. Um, I'm having to kind of take it myself. <laughs> Not an easy thing, but um, we've got to try to avoid situationships as much as possible. Um, and I say it's not easy because uh, I know many in my audience are single, um, like I have been for a very long time. We've been doing the self-healing, the personal awareness and growth, you know. Um, and, you you know, after so many years of this, you come out of it like, okay, I'm ready. And the world doesn't seem to be ready, do they? And so you come across a lot of people who, for one reason or another, uh, they are they're insecure or they're not willing or able to uh, give you what you value what you need and so you end up settling on scraps because well at this point you're starving right i'm not really saying you know it's okay to engage in this stuff i'm saying i get you i understand you if that's your situation um however with venus and capricorn retrograde this entire month, there is a retraction, a pullback within oneself, looking at your love nature, what is nourishing you, mind, body, spirit, and say, you know what, who or what is adding value to my life right now? Is this person a distraction? Are they a detraction from my direction in life? Um, and if you're having trouble discerning this, okay, because I know it can get into a lot of gray area sometimes with people because it feels good, but where is this going? And maybe it's too soon to tell, but ask yourself um, if you were having trouble 
Is this somebody you can call upon? That's your answer right there. Uh, that's a sign. That's an indication. Um, there's a saying that adversity reveals character. Adversity reveals your true friends. And so size these things up, okay? Because it's important, I think, for us to consider, as I said before, aligning our core needs and values with external relationships and try to avoid over-investing in the wrong relationships. And it's not because we're being judgy or rejecting anybody or whatever. It's because you've only got one life, right? Your life is precious. Your time is precious. And if you don't manage it well, people will waste your life. They will redirect your focus away from your life purpose destiny. And that's something that you need to take seriously. Don't allow other people to derail you with their own scatteredness or having you tend to their agendas while you ignore your own, right? And, and yeah, for some of you, if particularly if you are like me and you're an empath and you, you, you easily absorb people's energies and their feelings and their needs and their values easily become yours, well, this is maybe a time to kind of Capricorn it and tell yourself, you know, just because people are nice to you doesn't mean they're right for you. This is really taking a mature, adult, sober look at these relationships. And some of you maybe need to get a stronger resolve within yourself to let go of this internal resistance that maybe you have um, to avoiding disappointment in relationship and being the bad person and saying, I'm sorry, but this is not really going to work out. You know, we're going in two different directions here. The sun in Capricorn is going to help with this. Venus in Capricorn re retrograde is going to help with this. And so I want to encourage you to take a sober look at, you know, who gets a green light in your life and who gets the red light, right? You know, say no when you need to say no. Set those healthy boundaries. If you need to decline or reject an offer, you know, um, do it. And, and maybe uh, not through such an emotional lens, which can sometimes not be good for us, right? We empaths know this. Saying yes to the wrong people is not a good, not a good thing, right? So something you can take yourself to task on this month and you know um capricorn is a taskmaster here but yeah you could you could really challenge yourself and say uh, what do i require what do i honestly require to be happy what are my desires who or what is supporting that and and that might take a willingness to look at who can't or won't no feelings hurt, just let's look at the facts. This person either can't do it or they won't do it for whatever reason. They're not gonna help support me in getting to where I wanna go with my life. Um, also look at uh, what actions are you taking to support getting yourself where you're going towards what you desire and what you require to be happy. All right, because sometimes we engage in self-sabotage. We say we want something, but then the actions don't align. So really be raw and unapologetically honest with yourself about misalignments this month as much as you can help it. All right, what you can expect in terms of career and money. Well, I think that many of us are uh, reviewing money through a more traditional lens, through more traditional values. Matter of fact, just yesterday, um, I went through and I mapped out all my bills that need to get paid and I'm trying to strategize and I've got my financial goals and I might even put out like a special on my readings, by the way, so stay tuned for that, okay, um, just so I can meet my financial goals, right? There's a lot of this, I want to get this done, you know, and this is what I value and I want to accomplish this type of energy, but again, it's coming from this, I need to secure things, I need to stabilize things, but what is going to get things more safe and stable and secure financially in your life is maybe again you're looking at it from another angle and some of you maybe being more frugal you're trying to avoid more waste i'll talk more to that in a moment but i want to say i want to encourage you yes capricorn energy is very much about efficiency and effectiveness and that's all good and great, right? You know, we don't want to 
be wasteful, you know, and frugality has its time and place. But at the same time, I want to encourage you all, uh, you know, this is not all about retracting, retracting, retracting with Capricorn. It's about how can I increase? How can I afford more? How can, how can I, right? Like I recently put out a, a video on uh, how to save money despite the upcoming inflation. And there were some people who commented, you know, real nasty in the comments down below um, because I, I was doing a clean stockpile, right? I try to buy foods that are good for my health, okay? While I am saving money and I try to give tips here and there, but I don't cut back on my health. I never do that. So if you're in a mindset of that, you're just gonna cut back your grocery bill by eating what is equivalent to cattle feed filler okay making yourself sick running up your medical bills please don't capricorn it like that you know anybody can buy cheap that doesn't take skill you want capricorn skill figure out how to get quality for less not cheap for cheap that anybody can do that figure out how do you get quality for less that's a real challenge here and yeah, maybe that's why rather than trying to penny pinch and save and, and be a miser, you figure out how do I increase my income? How do I open up streams of revenue? How do I boss up? The Capricorn is a boss, okay? Yes, it, Capricorn manages their resources very well and they cut back when needed and they don't engage in waste. But at the same time, that Capricorn energy pairs that efficiency and effectiveness in managing resources with increasing resources. I think I've said what I need to say on that. I hope y'all get me. All right, now this month, I think with the financial markets, we are going to continue to see more gaslighting, uh, more manipulation, more distortion. I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. I am concerned that there might be some kind of major upset in February because of the Pluto return in the second house of the United States naval chart. I will talk about that more as we get into the month. So let me say, if you wanna make sure that you are getting my commentary on this and you don't miss it, then you gotta make sure you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications because I am hoping in the month of January to release Astro Reports on Bitcoin, crypto, and talk more in detail about this Pluto return in the second house for the United States. And I'm probably also going to do uh, some astrology on Biden's chart as well. So if you are interested in that, make sure you're staying in the loop by doing more than subscribing. You got to hit that bell for notification. All right, many of you know, but some of you don't. Got to say it for those people. Now, hyperinflation or inflation. Um, we're going to see continued lies in the media. And, you know, again, this was some of the backlash that I got on my last video on how, you know, food prices are coming up, uh, you know, higher over the next year and and some of you if you're really paying attention and you're really hearing all sides of the story you know that there's people out there that have been lying over the last two years saying that it's not inflation that it's transitory and now they're coming out admitting something different and my god i'm going to ask you people please you know if you're gonna shoot me down Pay attention to who's telling you these tall tales, okay? Who has been the one that's been going from saying there's no inflation to now it's transitory to now it's here to stay? Those are liars. And you got to know that we have a bunch of paid liars in corporate-owned media. They're paid def professional deflectors, liars, gaslighters, okay? And so, you know, these are the same people that told you that this theory about the you know what being cooked up in a lab in you know what country being run by the ccp that that was all conspiracy theory well pay attention to who's being called conspiracy theorists and how many of those theories from last year have been proven correct and factual by now okay uh, i know some of you don't need to be told this you don't need to be reminded of this okay but 
I, I guess I'm getting tired of, I'm putting the truth out there and I'm dealing with <clears throat> the public, people in the public who um, are still engaging in this name calling, gaslighting, um, it's bad, it's bad, by the way, bad reasoning, okay? When you have no better argument, you just call, call people names. It's, you know, middle school logic, all right, is what we're seeing. Uh, but we, we can clearly see that the food prices are going up. They're going to continue to. And what I'm doing in response to that is trying to put information out there um, to help equip y'all to, right, we, I, we can't stop what's coming, the, the inflation that devolves into hyperinflation. Uh, I, that is out of my control, right? But what I can do is decide how I'm going to respond. And how I respond is by doubling up here and there as I'm able on foods that protect and boost my immune system and add nutrients to my body to keep me healthy and well. And the same with my family. That's how I can fight and you know, share my tips with y'all on how to do it too, okay? Um, January, it's just gonna be more of this. And frankly, the first quarter of this year, it's gonna be probably like that and, and buckle up because as we get into February, I, I am concerned like th there's something, there's gonna be a tipping point in February likely. Some are saying April and I don't know where they're getting April from because if I look at the astrology, that Pluto return for the United States in the second house is, it's no joke, okay? Now moving on, um, you know, with employment situation, job market and all that, we are continuing to deal with the fallout from the great resignation. Battles over vax mandates are continuing. I don't wanna get too long winded on that. Some of you know that got shot down. The government was trying to use OSHA. Um, an unelected, unaccountable government bureaucracy uh, to basically force Americans to follow a mandate as if it's law, when in fact, they it's not law. It, mandates are not law. I got to keep repeating for those of you who don't right know that. And, and furthermore, um, the government should not be using unaccountable, unelected officials through these different government agencies to impose rules in a manner that circumvents laws. I don't know how much more of this we're gonna to continue to see, but I think the lines have been drawn in the sand. It's pretty clear by now, people who wanted the vaccine have pretty much gotten the vaccine and those who don't want it have not gotten it. So what's left to do? Try to find another angle to ram it down your throats if we can't get through OSHA. It basically seems to be the, the approach. At least that's what I'm seeing in other countries and it's getting a little concerning of, okay, what angle are they gonna try this next time if they can't get it through OSHA and get shot down in the court, well, then what? Then what? I don't think they're going to go away quietly, people, just right. And I've been telling a lot of my viewers, and I have to say it again for those who've not heard it before, if you don't want to get vaxxed, but you need a job and your employer is forcing you, you do not have to get vaxxed. There are employers who will hire you. There's a list for it on gab.com, okay? Um, and no job is worth your health, no job. You need to respect your body more than that because you have to realize that if something goes wrong with this and something has, I'll talk about that more later on, uh, but if something goes wrong, then nobody is held liable. There's no legal protection for people, at least in the United States. Um, who are injured from this, not the company mandating it and not the pharmaceutical companies who created it. They have long legislated Congress to exempt them from any legal liability. Very concerning. You got to take responsibility for your own health. Okay, let's talk about um, jobs that are being created right now. I think what I'm hearing is that um, we are seeing a lot of highly skilled, high-tech positions emerging, and those have to do with AI robotics. Again, where's that going? Okay, uh, we are continuing to see a lot of jobs being made obsolete by technology and robotics. 
And if you want a job, I guess you got to work in technology and robotics, okay? It's, we're coming into an era of technocracy. Being ruled by tech, it's quite disturbing. And again, um, it's yes, it's kind of out of your control, but then again, how you respond to it is in your control. That's free will. If you are a business owner or you're trying to get a side hustle going um, this month, this year, I want to say that I would not encourage getting any type of brick and mortar businesses going generally. Uh, and this is more specific to areas where the lockdowns have been the hardest. If you are in a blue state or a blue city, obviously that area is not friendly to brick and mortar small businesses. If you're in a red state or a red city, then, you know, perhaps, right, because where I'm at, which is very, you know, there's a lot of, um, in Texas, there's a lot of new brick and mortars opening up, and I see them doing well, but again, it's because the local government, economy, culture supports that. But the people I'm seeing online who are not living in those areas, I would not encourage brick and mortar. Instead, you probably want to do online business, you would fare better. Although I gotta say, it's very competitive. Um, I started my online business in 2017. My gosh, it's really competitive. We're talking about, uh, you know, I maybe I could put another video out where I give more advice about that, but um, do not expect it to be easy because, you know, how many people right now post COVID are online? trying to launch their businesses or side hustles or whatever and so i don't want to discourage you but again this is about taking a realistic approach if you are going to do an online business or you're trying to grow your online business there is a lot of adversity because how many other people are on there that you're competing with my advice for the month of january is i would avoid over committing on any kind of monetary obligations. I wouldn't take on any more debt so much as you could help it. Um, try to get those debts paid down. Uh, I wouldn't, like I'm also holding off on investments. I usually, apart from, I invested, loosely speaking, in my stockpile, right? Cause you know you gotta eat <laughs> and you know the food prices are going up. But in terms of like silver and crypto investing, I mean, if you have disposable income, I'd say maybe some of you could get into silver. It is really low right now. My concern is I don't know when when we're going to reach that breaking point, because as long as they keep the charade going with the financial markets, the actual value of silver is being suppressed by JP Morgan. This is what it amounts to. And on the crypto, again, really all markets, whether we're talking about stock market, um, the precious metals market, um, even the real estate market, all these markets. I'm kind of like on high alert. I, I want to wait until February passes before I do anything more because I'm, it's kind of like wait and see up in the air. Let, let's see where this goes. I'm going to tell you if the shit hits the fan in February, I will be buying up discount priced assets. Okay. Right. And everybody during that time is going to be losing their crap. I'm mean, just saying if there is any kind of crash and I know there's people out there saying that it's going to happen and people saying it won't, they'll keep the charade up for as long as they can. And I think that's probably the truth. All right. But whatever the event is financially in the United States in February, I'm going to sit back and watch. And I'm telling you, pull back your resources if you can, because if if the markets go down really low in February for whatever reason, and you do have disposable income, that's the time to kind of go in and get them at a really low price. Buy low, sell high, that's how you make profit, right? You don't run when everybody else is running. You, you go in when everybody's trying to jump ship, okay? That's when you get it cheap. So I would say for January, I'm, I would lay low, okay? That's what I'm doing. The only thing I, I spent money on this month is my stockpile, okay? That's it. So I got to say, this is not financial advice, right? You got to take responsibility for your own decisions, okay? Um, I share with you what I think and what I'm doing. At the end of the day, you do your own thing. But in terms of actual assets or possessions around your home, I think this is a great month to like spring clean, declutter, simplify. If there are things that you don't need, use love, uh, donate it and, or sell it if you can. 
And yeah, obviously if you're donating, you write that off on your taxes by April, okay? This is about having a clean, mean, running financial machine as much as possible. And yes, consider stockpiling now, um, as I've said before, so that you can pay less later uh, as food and prices increase. Also, learn and practice how to have a waste-free kitchen and learn how to practice having a kitchen garden. Uh, these are things that I've been slowly learning over the last year or so, and I'm continuing to learn, and I'm hoping to share with you guys on this channel so that we're not throwing things away, right? When you buy food at the grocery store like produce, you don't have to keep buying something that you could simply regrow at home and save money. If you're cash strapped this month, um, let me also say that uh, consider this as a strategy, okay? And, you know, rather than, I know there's like some people who go out and get payday loans, my God, the worst, pawn shops, the worst, right? I will say for those of you who actually have some money, okay, let's say you have money in crypto, um, it would be better for you to get like a loan against your Bitcoin on, um, say Coinbase, we'll do this at 8%. And some of you are like, I don't have any crypto. Well, guess what? Did you know you can earn crypto on Coinbase by simply uh, taking their little learning apps, okay? I mean, and, and I know some of you are very advanced, okay? And you're like, oh my gosh, Coinbase. And you, right, I don't want to get too complicated in this video, but I'm saying for the beginners, for an entry point, you could get onto Coinbase. You can take their little tutorials, start earning crypto just from their their tutorials okay um and for those of you who actually do have coinbase and bitcoin on coinbase you can get a loan against your crypto at eight percent and uh right obviously and then this is better than what the 20 percent on credit cards or whatever so try to be strategic right like if you need to pay off a debt that uh, say a credit card debt that is at 20 percent plus interest rate and you need to pay this off it might be better for you to take that loan against your crypto so you're paying only eight percent as opposed to 20 percent this is strategy right from the beginning i said this is about recalibrating re-strategizing reprioritizing all right here it is this is how you do it in a real practical way some of you again you're not into crypto but you've got some kind of debt so maybe look at consolidation or renegotiating debt that's a possibility as well this is a good month to do it take yourself to task in a very capricornian way by strategizing for the year ahead with this north no node in Taurus, um, we all have to collectively look at what's viable, what's sustainable. And sometimes the answers to those questions are not what we want to hear, but what we need to know in order to make decisions, quality decisions. Okay, what to expect in the world at large in January? Well, 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 well. We are coming into this month with that Ghislaine Maxwell case closing out, right? That was an interesting, I don't know if y'all caught on to that, but you know, some people are like, yeah, what happened to that little black book? Why are we not, not hearing about that? Um, and, and there's speculation as to, you know, is she gonna get Epstein, right? And for those of you who are not in the loop and don't know what kind of code speak, I'm speaking. <laughs> um, yeah, many people are saying uh, he did not hang himself, okay? It's kind of like John McAfee, you know, that, you know, he was wanted by the U.S. government. And then, wow, you know, he just winds up suicided all alone in his jail cell. So um, we see a pattern here with people getting Epstein and uh, people wondering, well, is this going to, is this going to happen, you know, uh, with Ghislaine? Um, all of a sudden she's going to get Epstein. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, and speaking of pedo rings, pedo rings, um, did y'all see that in December there were scandals involving pedophilia with CNN, top producers, top executives, and the media just went silent over it. So 
Um, weird stuff going on. If y'all were watching my astrology reports back in October, November, I talked about this. I talked about how the public is going to get a lot more aware about these sex scandals and um, child pedophilia rings and all of that. And here we go again. But you see, as there's an unveiling of the truth, you get this pushback of uh, these people in authority wanting to really, you know, sweep it under the rug. And uh, unfortunately, you know, they've, they've been very successful at doing it, particularly towards people who are so distracted by life uh, that they have not really had the time to pay attention to what's going on, or maybe they have short attention spans, maybe they're overly medicated. <laughs> oh, that's a whole nother thing. Um, you know, or short memory, short memory of, wait a minute, weren't you the same people that were telling me to like, do xyz about a year ago and that that was going to fix all that and a bunch of people did and we're still in the same boat like they can't connect the dots for whatever reason so a lot of people are out of the loop and not paying attention to what's going on but i'm just going to remind you for those who need reminding i was talking to you about this back in october november and here we are starting a new year with it now I talked to you about the monetary system coming up in February that you need to get situated now in January if you're not already, at least with your stockpile. If you want to watch my video on how I did that most recently with some tips on how you could do it, it's like a 13 minute long video. You can, I'll have the link for it um, either down below in the comments in the description box or um, I'll have it at the tail end of this video for those of you who are interested. Um, and like I said, I'm going to talk more about crypto in the coming month. So make sure you're tuned in for that um, because I do believe that over January and February, because of the astrology, these monetary topics are going to take a heightened interest for a lot of people, people who don't normally pay attention to this stuff. They're going to be, trust me, like I'm not a money person. I'm not. But when I started feeling the pain of not being financially disciplined, that's when I decided that I was going to trade that pain for the pain of becoming financially disciplined and financially literate. Okay. And by the way, we're dealing with a nation of people who are financially illiterate. It is on purpose through the school system, because if you had any clue what was going on, there would be riding out in the streets, okay? And I'm not talking down at anybody. I'm self-included. I've had to, like, grow up. And this is Capricorn. Grow up. It's not about what you feel. It's what's real uh, with the money. And I'm still having to suck up some things in this reality that I don't like. It's, I'm still having to deal with that, okay? I do feel also that in January there will be a return towards more critical thinking skills because of Mercury and Aquarius. And so, right, you're getting more people stepping up and saying, you know what, why are people with face masks, face shields, shots, boosters, why are they still catching COVID? Ah, very good question. Why didn't we ask this sooner? Mercury and Aquarius are going to help with that. Um, other questions like, why are COVID rates higher in areas with higher vaccine rates? Hmm. Yeah, like more, more percentage of the population is vaccinated, yet higher COVID rates. Not, something ain't adding up here, okay? Something's not adding up here. Um, by the way, I'm hoping that you guys got to watch Dr. Malone, the inventor of the mRNA vaccine, uh, who was censored recently on Twitter, but then interviewed on Joe Rogan, um, on the Joe Rogan show, who, by the way, Joe Rogan was smeared by CNN for taking the you-know-what that I don't want to say on here that starts with an I and ends with an N, uh, because, you know, we're not allowed to talk about alternatives, right, that don't profit big pharma handsomely. Um, he, he was on there, and I'm going to tell you that's, if you have not seen that, that's something you need to absolutely, it, it is long, it's like a three-hour interview, okay, I'm going to put the link down for that, I'm going to put the link for that down below, okay, but if you haven't seen it, um, definitely see it. I think that people are starting uh, to gather more information that's mercury and aquarius like one person said hey if it's science you can question it if you can't it's propaganda 
That was Luke Radowski, by the way, of We Are Change. And um, he's one of my favorite people to watch uh, give political commentary. And I've mentioned him in my video that I put out. Like, if y'all are interested in knowing the people that I watch, that I follow on YouTube for political content, I've got a video out about that, the top people that I listen to for that content. And he's in there. But, and by the way, if you want to follow the people that I'm following, you can check me out at, on Twitter at WarriorWoman212. But anyway, I, going back to this interview of Dr. Malone by Joe Rogan, I think people are starting to start, you know, they're, they're figuring out, wait a minute, what, something's wrong here. This guy invented the vaccine that we're all supposed to be taking, but you're censoring him? Why is there a witch hunt on doctors? Why is there blackballing, blacklisting of alternative media? Why are we doing this? And, and clearly, actually, the numbers are demonstrating more people are watching Joe Rogan and even Tucker Carlson than CNNs and all of that. Yet they're, they're the ones having the control over who gets taken down, who gets featured, and all of that. So people are starting to add this up, um, that there is a concerted effort to censor anything that's frankly deemed to promote vaccine hesitancy so that people can keep getting richer off of this. By the way, that's something that is very well explained by Dr. Malone on the Joe Rogan Show. Please do check it out if you can. But uh, I'm going to also say that um, starting this year, yes, in January, uh, we are beginning to see a mass exodus from big tech social media. I've slowly been going over there as well, but um, I think that as we get into more Aquarius energy in February, uh, it's probably gonna get even more pronounced with people leaving and getting off of you know Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Instagram. How soon will TikTok follow? I don't know, um, but I will say I've recently heard that Senator Rand Paul has refused to be on YouTube and has instead gone to rumble. And so it's just a sign of the times that people are starting to transition, right? Um, I know that when there was a massive purge last year, and even post uh, them taking down uh, President Trump from Twitter, a lot of people were purged and, and left by, on their own accord at that time. And we've had a lot of um, congressional hearings that expose some, you know, privacy violations and, and whatnot uh, with Facebook. And a lot of people left at that time. I haven't been on Facebook since 2017. That's a whole nother story. But I'm just saying, slowly, there's a trickling going on towards this. And I think it's getting heightened as we get through January and even into February. Um, and where are people going? Where are specifically liberty-minded people going? They're going to Gab.com, Getter. They're going to Rumble, Parlor, And I recently heard about Sovereign, okay? There's some other ones, BitChute, Library, Odyssey. Um, but every people are just starting to kind of get into uh, their, their plan B, right? Because this plan A of these major big tech platforms not working out too well when you can't be heard, you can't be seen because, you know, your opinions are not status quo. They're not furthering the agenda. I do believe also we're going to have um, more riots and protests. Uh, people are having to get creative in some areas as to how to do that. I think that, again, as we get further into um, February with increased Aquarius energy, uh, there's going to be even more of this, more of humanity uprising. And um, as I said before, I'll say it again, the revolution will not be televised. <laughs> um, how do I know about these things? Because I follow the alternative media, okay? That's how I'm in the know. And so what you're seeing is that people are... Um, as they're dealing with harder and harder lockdowns in some areas that frankly don't have a prayer because they've already been disarmed, right? What is Australia going to do? How on earth would Australia fight tyrannical government? They've been disarmed. You see the same thing going on in Germany, okay? So people are having to get very creative by, right? Like if they can't go to a restaurant without a vaccine passport, they are just having picnics out in front of the restaurant to protest, right? This is what they're doing. And um, 
so I, I want to remind you as you're seeing more of this occurring, um, realize that other people, humanity is realizing that this is not about your safety at all. It never has been. And the people who warned you about this and were called names, conspiracy theorists, tinfoil hat wearers, added up. A lot of what we said last year that we were ostracized for has proven to be true. What are we saying this year that is also true? Unpopular as it is. I think that people are beginning to realize, by the way, you know, that media, yes, is a virus and um, we've got to shut it off. We've got to get back to living again in spite of what others think and what others feel. Um, it, and that's, by the way, a very, very Capricornian, Aquarian, Saturnian type of vibe of, no, nah, this is what we're doing because this is what needs to be done. Like you can't sit at home and be paralyzed living in fear. You got to get out there and make life happen. All right, let's cover those important dates. Coming into January, there's going to be a lot of Capricorn and Saturnian energy. Yes, even as we get more into Aquarius energy, right? Even Aquarius is co-ruled by Saturn as Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So yes, coming into this month with the Sun in Capricorn and Venus retrograde in Capricorn, a lot of people are like, uh, where's my money? Damn it, where is it? <laughs> And also, uh, let me remind you, this is the last month of the North Node being in Gemini, the South Node in Sagittarius, which we've dealt with for the last year and a half of all those eclipses and those signs. It is shifting this month. Now, January 2nd, we had Mercury in Aquarius and the new moon in Capricorn. And by the way, Mercury in Aquarius will be there until January 25th, and then we'll return again February 14th through March 9th. That's an energy that is really going to help us to think out of the box. It's good for critical thinking skills and getting clarity, seeing things more logically, but also entirely different. It's very future focused, very visionary. Just be careful uh, not to reason away feelings because that's kind of one of the gift curses with this energy. And that new moon in Capricorn has started a new cycle of new beginnings. It's cardinal energy of getting things started, but it's an earthy Capricorn where it's like we've got to be grounded here. So a lot of people on January 2nd were setting their goals and really taking a cold hard look at what matters, what's useful, what's essential. And this is really playing into the overall energy this year of having to put simplicity over complexity. Just a warning. If you're not feeling validated in your work right now, uh, you might need to dedicate yourself to overcoming these, these doubts. And I think a lot of people were doing that around the time of the new moon in Capricorn. The good news is that this is an empowering energy, but again, it's an empowerment with a realistic, practical approach. And it supports restructuring things. Yes, if something has gotten out of order, this is helping you to bring order out of chaos. And there is more of an embracing of rules and boundaries with Capricorn. But again, as we get more into this Aquarian energy, it's doing that in a way that brings freedom rather than impedes it. And this energy also is pushing us to connect more with our own higher inner authority rather than the external authorities. Another thing going on with this new moon is that it's conjunct Venus and Pluto, also square Chiron, trine Uranus, and opposing Sirius. So... Overall, this energy is pushing us to make dedicated changes that support our values and with the ideals in mind because of Mercury and Aquarius there. Now, January 8th, Venus inferior. Solar is uh, conjunct. We've got this energy that's putting a focus again on what is and isn't working in our relationships. And it might be a difficult thing to take a look at because it could bring up these issues of what seems unattainable. It's a pain point. January 12th, Mars out of bounds in Sagittarius until February 10th. Well, warning here, okay, things could get a little heated. You could see heightened aggression in other people, heightened sexual tension, um, stress, all of this stemming from unfulfilled desires. 
And so there is a caution here that, you know, in extreme cases, yes, it could break out into violence with some people. Obviously, you know, I don't think that's you. Most people listening to this channel are trying to get above all that, right? And so I think the advice with this energy, if, if you do feel the stress and the tension and the aggression rising up in you because certain desires are not being fulfilled well, try to channel this passion towards further fueling that ambitious drive that all this Capricorn energy has been putting on us. January 14th, Mercury retrograde in Aquarius until February 3rd. This is bringing about a shift in consciousness, hopefully for the collective, a higher awareness. Obviously, we always say with Mercury retrogrades to back up your important documents because there could be tech issues, there could be, com you know, breakdown of communications. Um, and so definitely be aware of this, particularly with social situations where you might see some kind of misunderstandings arise. I do think overall, this would be a good time to reassess how you socially network, maybe look at alternative social media platforms. And it's also a good time to reconcile your ideals with reality. Release what's not working or what no longer works or just isn't worth it, okay? <laughs> because maybe you've assessed your values have changed. January 17th, we've got a full moon in Cancer and it is a wolf moon. And it's trining Neptune, opposing Pluto. It's also harmonizing with the North Node as the Sun aligns with Pluto. So... Overall, you know, full moons are about endings, completions, culminations. And again, we've got more of this cardinal energy in Cancer of starting stuff, starting stuff, okay, initiating things. But unlike the new moon, which was in Capricorn, another cardinal energy that wants to start stuff, um, this is in a water sign of Cancer, not the earth sign of Capricorn, right? So we're getting this contrast here of very emotional, intense, heavy revies, okay, um, which may lead some of you to, again, feel this hunger or desire for what is lacking in your life. That's like being illuminated, undeniable, and it might have to do with prosperity, security issues, or sense of belonging. And if some of you are going through a lean time, um, this is about really becoming more self-aware of how these external issues stir you up internally and not letting them subconsciously drive your actions solely. It's, it's a heightened awareness of what you're feeding nourishing versus what you're not. There could be emotional issues that perhaps have been unresolved, stuff suppressed, and if so, they're probably going to surface around this time might be forcing you to recognize a lack of abundance and a need to build more resilience during lean times that, right, the cycles of life, just like you have harvest time during the calendar year, you also have winter, right? So this is about building an awareness of self-sufficiency and the need to become more self-reliant and resilient by unfortunately realizing how financial insecurity can affect emotional insecurities, realizing how to better protect yourself and nurture this in the future. Just be aware of anxieties and insecurities that might trigger uh, external relational dramas or reveal an internal conflict within yourself that's been stored within your emotional body and again needs to be released and processed in a healthy way. For some of you, uh, this might be a more subconscious uh, where it's triggering something from early childhood conditioning having to do with how you nurture yourself and why or how you protect yourself and why. January 18th, Uranus, direct in Taurus. It's been retrograde since August 19th, 2021. This is bringing about sudden twists and turns to what you value, you possess, what you receive as income. Some of you might already be feeling it. It is definitely about the practicalities of life. It's another energy here pushing you to address suppressed or unresolved issues that have maybe come up over the last four months that perhaps you have successfully mitigated or muted out. But once Uranus goes direct with this energy, the urges for change in your personal life suddenly become undeniable. 
And this might suddenly erupt in the form of a major shift that you might not have seen coming. If you're concerned about how this is going to arise, obviously look at where Uranus is transiting in your natal chart. If you need help with that, of course, come see me for um, a reading. Contact information is in the uh, link down below. Now, also on the same day, uh, North Node in Taurus, South Node in Scorpio, that's where we get the nodal shift, okay? And this is ushering in a new one and a half years of eclipses in these signs. And I'm not going to rehash what's already been stated. If you want to know more about this, then go check out the 2022 astrological forecast that I put out in a two-part series. I'll have the link for that. So you can click onto the video. It's going to be at the very end of this video. So just watch to the end and then click onto that if you're interested. But definitely this is going to be a moving away of the last year and a half of all this mental energy about what people think and believe and what are the facts and yada yada towards a more emotional, financial energy where we're focused on security and stability. January 19th, the sun is going to be in Aquarius. Again, more of this Saturnian energy carrying us uh, all month long, where um, the the difference here, though, is that Aquarius is co-ruled by Uranus. So uh, there will be this logical energy here and, and fixed, stable energy here, but there's also this change-making energy here. So it, it will be very logical energy, but it's also idealistic, whereas Capricorn was realistic. And the spotlight is going to be on the collective, on knowing, knowledge, um, taking more of a curious approach, um, whereas Capricorn was more methodical. This is more, well, let's, let's talk this out. Let's reason through this, shall we? Also, a focus more on individual liberties, marching to your own drum. Whereas Capricorn is more status quo, Aquarius, Sun and Aquarius is more about the individual. It's going to have people a lot more inventive, more revolutionary, maybe more willing to take the road less traveled. Whereas Sun and Capricorn was, we're going to stick with the tried and true. Well, it always works. So why isn't it working now? But Aquarius is like, yeah, actually, that's not working too well anymore. Let's do something different. There is going to be more of a willingness to let go of what's outdated, outmoded, and finding a new perspective more of a desire with this energy to break free of uh, restrictions and limitations rather than cling to them like Capricorn would have been inclined, right? As a false sense of security, Sun in Aquarius is more willing to break that down and be more social, get out in the community. Yes, might see more protests, more social activism. And yeah, whatever the Sun in Capricorn saw as secure and grounded, um, yeah, perhaps People are going to start looking at that as, you know, <laughs> tightly wound, uptight, you know, and, and there's going to be more of a free, um, free thinking and free moving type of energy. I'm, I'm liking it. But then again, I'm partial as a sun in Aquarius. <laughs> January 24th, Mars in Capricorn. Great placement for Mars to be. It is exalted here. This is an energizer bunny type of energy where it just keeps going and going and going. It is um, ambitious, calculated, calibrated, strategic. It is an energy that is willing to carefully plan, but also willing to put the work in. It's patient, persistent, tenacious, disciplined. So I definitely see all through the month those plans that got initiated at the beginning of the month with that new moon in Capricorn. Well, people are still hammering away at it by the end of the month. There's only a one warning here is about inflexibility and being predictable to a fault to the point that it's boring or, you know, you're just hanging on to something that needs to be let go of. Obviously, use your own discernment. Sometimes you got to hold the line. Sometimes you got to break it, right? No one to break the rules, no one to keep them. That's Aquarius for you. And the sun in Aquarius during this time will help you to do that. January 25th, Mercury re-enters Capricorn and will be there until February 14th. So you might be reflecting on and revisiting some mental matters from the last Mercury in Capricorn, which was December 13th of last year up until January 2nd. Again, we, it's almost some of people are going back to more of this methodical thinking about, well, what's essential, what's viable, what's sustainable. So at least in their mind, they're trying to be realistic, even, that, even though that sun in Aquarius is like, but what about the ideals, right? We're having to reconcile 
definitely as we get deeper into this month, reconcile the ideals with reality. And I can see it here with these Capricorn Aquarius energies kind of ping ponging off of each other. It is a very no nonsense energy. And again, might have some people coming across as inflexible, unyielding, or unsympathetic. And again, maybe rightly so, use your own discernment. Because, you know, the truth hurts. And the truth doesn't care. And that's, you know, that's Aquarius. And Capricorn as well. <laughs> and we're going to have plenty of it. But damn with that full moon in Cancer. <sighs> might be hard pill to swallow. Okay, just saying. Maintain perspective. Finally, January 29th, Venus is going direct in Capricorn, and it's been retrograde since December 19th of last year. So this is us moving on after heavily reassessing finances, relationships, values, self-worth matters. And yes, maybe our entire value system went through some kind of really significant overhaul where we cleared out non-essential relationships, unworkable conditions, and now we come out of this time with a clearer concept of what we actually love and value and use and absolutely what is worth working on because we can realistically see a return on investment with these things. And so overall, you know, the last part of the month uh, from the 24th to the 29th with that Mars and Capricorn, Venus direct in Capricorn, we are coming into February with this drive to get things done. Okay, so let's get on to the homework assignment so that hopefully you can make the most out of this energy. I would really encourage people to reflect this month on what they value in their relationships, okay? And relationships, of course, could be with people, but it could also be your relationship with yourself, your relationship with money, your relationship with valuables, um, possessions, a lot of things. And then make a decision within yourself to invest wisely in what you value and prioritize your attention wisely. And if life feels complicated this month, then, you know, really consider how you can simplify your life. Start giving attention to what works and no longer giving attention to what doesn't. Also look at what's essential in your life, um, what matters the most to you, and then make the time and space for that so that you're coming, you're aligning your beliefs and your thoughts with action. If you are dealing with stress this month, possibly some ways you can manage, manage it is, um, I'd say, you know, don't wait on getting relief from others, looking externally for other people, other authorities, to come and do it for you, right? It's these dependency issues that we're having to release with the South Node in Scorpio. Um, it It's really an energy pushing us to identify what the stressors are in our lives and look at resolving them conclusively rather than coping with or adapting to stress that you were never designed to cope or adapt to. And also, realize that perhaps some of these coping mechanisms have actually not been good for you. They've maybe stunted your personal growth. And, you know, this is advice I have to give myself. Um, <laughs> it's my cat. Some advice I have to give myself is um, to try to look at challenges through a different lens and, yeah, a very Capricorn lens where, you know, everything's like a chess move for them. And, Unfortunately, you know, with all my water placements in my natal chart, that's really been hard for me because I tend to emotionalize challenges. Um, definitely with a Chiron and Aries, uh, <laughs> and collectively we're dealing with that right now, that energy Chiron and Aries, okay? But I was born with that in my natal chart. So that energy can sometimes you start feeling like, you, you know, your self-worth takes a hit and you're not valued when there's pushback. Okay, so try if you can to um, look at things more in a tactical, strategic way rather than uh, emotionalizing. I know these are said and done, I gotta take my own advice. Um, but unfortunately, if um, you've recoiled in the face of challenge and you've pacified yourself rather than stepping up, um, you know, this would really be a month of considering how doing that has maybe in some way 
not been good for you, not been good for others, society at large, because right, we're dealing now in, with a very sick society of people who are maladapted, maladjusted to things that they never should have. Things that are just totally unhealthy. I, and, and that could be a whole other video. I'll stop at that. But you know what I'm saying. I think many of you could fill in the blank and you could figure out there's a lot of uh, unhealthy stuff that has become normalized in this society that we have adapted to we never should have. And that's not serving the highest purpose and good. So if this is a month where you're feeling out of control in your life, you feel like, well, I'm at the mercy of other people and powers and that you're powerless, um, maybe, yes, it's true. To some degree, you have been prevented, held back, pushed back from doing what you want to do. And those feelings are totally valid, okay? Um, maybe the game is rigged. Maybe things haven't been fair. And I'm right there with you if you've been feeling that, okay? But how do we find another playing field, right? If the playing field is rigged or it's not a fair game, how do we find another playing field? Like for example, going on to a different social media platform. Um, if things are not fair, can and there's no place to go that's fair, can we create something that is fair and ask other people to join in? Because we understand other people are going through the same thing. So. Right. It's like even with the business growth and everything that's going on with small businesses getting challenged right now, um, what can you do to change and adjust? It, you know, can you do things more in a traditional way offline or can you go non-traditional online? You will know what's right and fitting for you, but what can you do to be a game changer if the game is not fair and it's rigged? How do you change the game? Do you, some of you, I know you're going to want to say, well, I'm just going to stop playing the game or I'm just going to try to go back to what used to work. Unfortunately, I don't think, given the astrology, that we're going back to the old normal, okay? I don't, I'm not ready to accept the new normal that we've had shoved down our throats. I, I think that humanity is still deciding based on how they want to respond um, what the new normal will look like. I know what the pushback is trying to push on us as the new normal, but what are you doing to set the tone this year? What are you doing to be a game changer? Because I think that, you know, being passive and waiting around is not going to be the answer. And that's bad news for a lot of people because you're going to have to think outside of your box. You're going to have to think differently. Fortunately, all this Aquarian energy we're coming into is going to help with that. Also, the Capricorn energy will help you to restructure your life if you need to. And yes, to try something new or try something in a new way that maybe you did before, but it's like you're almost reinventing or re-envisioning the way it's being done. And I think that's going to get us far is by being different and doing different is going to really take us far. So I want to, with a homework assignment, not only encourage you to think on those things that I mentioned, but also um, try, yes, to watch that Joe Rogan interview with Dr. Malone on Rumble. And if you have a chance, um, watch 1984. Very, uh, like, my gosh, everybody should watch that. That's a classic. And yeah, consider a strategy, okay? Uh, get a strategy if you can. Write it down if you can. I think that ideally you hope for the best, but Capricorn's going to prepare for the worst, and that's what we need to do. And we can use, by the way, all the retrogrades of this year to take advantage of that timing to do more recalibrating, more prep work. Because you have to ask yourself, and I'm doing the same. This is hard. These are tough questions. But you have to ask yourself, what if it never goes back to normal? Then what? What if this never gets easier? What if this never changes? What if the old system and the old way is no longer viable? How can you, in those circumstances, positively reinvent your life despite the restrictions? What new paradigm can you support? And by the way, I'm gonna say as I'm closing this out, if you need help with it, just a reminder, I do, um, I do readings. 
and right now I've been putting out a lot of stuff on the annual readings. If you missed those, they're on my channel, very comprehensive. Uh, but of course, nothing is as detailed as a private reading. You get what you pay for, people. So I have been running a special on that, and if you missed out, it is 60 minutes for $100 where I can look into the forecast for the year, and that helps you specifically figure out what are your challenges this year, where are you going to get your easy breaks, where are you not, <laughs> so you can use the energy to your advantage. And um, some of you, if you just want to know about your finances or your love life over the next 12 months, I can definitely do that as well. Um, some of you, you need deeper stuff because you're going, you're in a crisis point at this time in your life, maybe uh, needing to break some habits, some patterns, some cycles that have been with you for decades, if not going all the way back to your childhood. And so I do healing readings. I do life purpose destiny readings for those of you who are having a career identity crisis. You're like, what am I supposed to be doing? Uh, especially needing to pivot with all these monetary changes. And others of you, the ideal life partner reading I do is to help you understand what kind of person ideally is the best, best fit for you in terms of really getting serious about a life partner. And it's important to know thyself, right? I think there's gonna be a lot of reflecting on this and I, I hope that you make the most of this time. And like I said, if you want more help with it, let me know. Contact information is down below. Till next time, y'all have a very good January and I hope to connect with you again.